Hey guys, welcome. Today in this video I would like to show you how you can prepare a smart contract that can trade your NFTs. And somebody asked about this in the comment section and I think it's really cool idea that we can actually have the separate smart contract that is able to hold information about the pricing and whenever somebody interacts with that smart contract, that smart contract can trade the NFTs from separate smart contract. So if you don't know how to mint uh, your very own NFT using ERC 1155 smart contract, check out some of my um, previous videos. You're gonna find also the link to that video somewhere here or there. Uh, so you can click and familiarize how to um, prepare your very own smart contract for NFTs. Uh, so I assume that you already have the smart contract and you can use it. Uh, so here in the, um, here I have the separate tab where I already have the code of that smart contract. So we're gonna deploy it soon. Uh, but now I will prepare the smart contract that would be responsible for holding pricing and information about uh, the tokens that we want to sell. And of course, I will also show you how you can uh, allow um, other con smart contracts to call the functions from the other smart contracts. Uh, also, if you would like to join um, in the description, you can find link to the free web three starter email cars from me. So you can just leave the email and you will receive from me two emails per week with some curated resources for JavaScript developers that will help you jump into the Web3 ecosystem. So if you are interested in that, just uh, join. Uh, besides uh, this free course, you will also get access to my closed Discord channel on which you can ask questions about the Solidity, exchange knowledge with other developers, or just find some interesting projects uh, to work on together and learn new things. So uh, we have the ERC-1155 and now uh, we're gonna need uh, the new contract. We're gonna call it NFT um, Trader. And uh, of course we need to also import ERC-1155 implementation because we're gonna need um, that uh, in our uh, smart contract here. Actually we can um, import the Open Zeppelin uh, contracts or we can just import the uh, game items uh, contract. However, we didn't customize anything uh, special. We just customized the URI, which is actually not needed by NFT trader. So I will not import the NFT trader. Uh, so I will not import the game items contract. I will just import the ERC 1155. So we have the contract uh, here. We have the body of that contract. And here we're gonna have the struct. And the struct is um, nice. Um, or think in the Solidity language, which uh, can uh, help you build some structures. So for instance, we have the listing and uh, this is the structure that can have two attributes. One is price and the second one is seller. Um, so I, I think structs are really uh, useful. You can read the official documentation about the structs. So we will not cover that in this uh, video, uh, but we're going to have the listing on which we're going to store information about the price. So we we want to take, of course, the payment for the NFT and we need to know who is the seller. So we have the struct and the next thing that we need is the mapping and mapping is something that you may know from other programming languages. It's um, something like hash from Ruby or associative arrays. So basically you have the key and you have the value and mapping, mapping here in this example, uh, the key might be the address. So for instance, the address of the smart contract would be the key and then uh, the value would be another mapping. Uh, so we have the token ID and then we are gonna have the listing with the price. So basically if I would type here something like um, let's say uh, listings and here I would type uh, zero blah blah blah. Well, this is the address of the smart contract. Uh, then I can type the ID which might be uh, zero. Uh, then I would get the listing uh, for the token ID from the smart contract with this 
address and the token ID as zero. And here I would have the price and seller. So as you can see, it's a really nice structure because uh, we can uh, have the unique uh, listing for um, the token ID. And then we can have a very easy access to that uh, specific uh, price listing. But you will see this in the in the moment. So we have the listing and now we're going to need uh, the function which would be called at listing uh, just that we can add the information about the price and this would be the function which we called at listing it takes price it takes contract address because we want to nft trader be nice smart contract that can work with multiple contract addresses and then we have also the token id because obviously we need to tell the smart contract what we want to sell and how much we want to get. And this would be the public function. However, we need to add um, some uh, requirements to this function because obviously the ad listing should work only um, for the people that actually uh, are owning that uh, token because it doesn't make any sense to to sell the token that we are not owning because we are not able to trade it. So uh, whenever you want to interact with the other smart contract from your smart contract, you have to import it and then you can use the name of the smart contract and also the type. So here I have the variable called token, which is the type of this smart contract. And then I can just provide the address of that smart contract. And then we're going to have um, the first check. And this check is that the caller of that function, which is the message sender, uh, has actually um, some token, uh, some tokens that uh, he wants to sell. So we have the requirement. And if that statement is um, true, uh, then everything is fine. However, if that statement is false, uh, then the, the execution of the smart contract, this function would be terminated and we would get the error caller must own given token. So token uh, dot balance off, of course, will check the balance of the token ID on the specific smart contract. So we have ERC 1155 smart contract that is on the given address. And we are calling that smart contract from, from our smart contract. I know this this sounds weird, but it's super cool because we have uh, this kind of modularity and interoperability of the smart contracts that we can write smart contracts that are talking to other smart contracts. And this is really powerful because it's all decentralized. So uh, we have the um, check whenever we have more than zero uh, amount of this token, then everything is fine. However, we also need um, to check whether the NFT trader smart contract is approved for moving tokens because of course we want to have everything automated so the seller can add the listing and specify the price and then if the buyer comes and if the buyer will call the function um, like uh, buy or, or purchase that we will implement in the minute uh, then the smart contract this that we are implementing the nft trader will take the money will store information about um, the transfer and then this smart contract will move the token in the name of the seller so we have to be sure that actually this smart contract is approved to move the certain token and we are checking this again calling the function is approved for all from the token and we are checking that for a message sender because we want to be sure that person that actually uh, adds the listing um, is um that 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 person uh, approved um, the um, other address, which is um, the address of this uh, smart contract. And whenever you want to get uh, the address of currently deployed smart contract, you have the way in Solidity to write address uh, this, and th this would return the, the current address of this uh, NFT trader. Because of course, if you deploy that, uh, you have the different address, and you don't know it in the moment of you when you are actually deploying the smart contract. So you have to have this information. And again, if this would be uh, false, uh, then we have the contract must be uh, approved. So we have these checks. And then uh, finally, we can store information about the listing. So as I told you, uh, we have the mapping uh, called listings, and this is the public variable. And here we can actually assign that this contract address
address has the token ID. And uh, for that token ID, we have the listing, the structure, uh, the struct uh, with the price and the information about the seller, which is the message sender. So, so great. We have the at listing um, and, and this function. And uh, for instance, we can uh, maybe deploy that smart contract. So uh, if we have uh, the NFT trader, uh, we can deploy it here. And for instance, if I would like to add the listing uh, from some contract, and of course I would need an NFT contract. So I will deploy it right now. Um, so uh, let me select it here. Um, of course, I need to compile it first. And once it's compiled, uh, then I can deploy the NFT here. And if I deployed uh, the smart contract here, I, I have this NFT um, smart contract ERC-1155. I can copy the address of that smart contract. And here I will try to add the listing. So I will type the price, which would be um, in way. So it's uh, 1000 uh, way. Uh, here is the contract address and the token ID uh, zero. Because as you remember, here we have the Charizard, Ivysaur, Venosaur, and, and the, the zero it was the Charizard. And if we click here, the transact now, uh, we have the error, like co contract must be approved. Because uh, as you remember, we have the check here. So um, we need to approve that contract. So we need to take it out address and then we can uh, have here set approval for all and we can type the operator which would be the address of the NFT trader and here we can just write through and we can write um, execute that um, and I'm the of course uh, I use this address to uh, actually deploy the game items uh, smart contract and I'm owning that smart contract because here in the constructor, I've sent uh, some uh, 100 Charizards to the message sender. So I'm able to actually approve that uh, smart contract. And now let's try again to add the listing. And now if I added the listing, everything is fine. And I can check the listing here. So I would basically take the contract address, type it here, token ID zero. And if I call it, then you see that we have our struct. So already something works we have the listings added to the smart contract so we know that uh, the token ID zero on the smart contract that we just deployed uh, the price of it is 1000 uh, way so okay we have the listing stored on our smart contract so far so great but of course we need to add a bit more logic to our smart contract to make it actually um, working so um, now we're gonna also need um, the um, the special mapping on which we're gonna hold information about the balance because whenever somebody gets money for the NFT, we want to store that information that okay the seller received this amount of um, way and we're gonna store it on the balances uh, mapping. So. Uh, then we have the function purchase and of course if somebody wants to purchase the nft uh, he needs to uh, tell specifically the address of the smart contract uh, the token id and the amount because of course on the erc 1155 you can hold 100 charizards and somebody can buy them all or just uh, buy one so so of course we we, we want to specify that uh, so um, then we're gonna have um, another thing which is um, of course we need to get the current listing for that item so again we are using our listings uh, contract address token id we're gonna store it in this uh, variable called item so now we can just uh, be sure that the send money because as you can see this function is uh, pay public payable so whenever you have the function marked as a payable you can uh, send some ether to that function and that uh, ether that you send is under the message value so we need to be sure that somebody transferred actually the price of the nft multiplied by amount so if if uh, the the one charizard costs uh, one thousand and somebody wants to buy one charizard of course we are just multiplying this by one but if somebody wants to buy all uh, Pokemons, uh, then of course the amount is can be 100 and then, then we should uh, 
check it. So, uh, okay, uh, we have this requirement uh, that we are checking that enough money was sent to the smart contract. And once we are sure uh, that enough money was sent, then we are storing information on the balances that this seller, uh, this guy received the money. So we are incrementing um, the balance of, uh, of this uh, guy. Uh, so um, then, uh, of course, um, if we are purchasing, we, we want to take the money, we want to store information about how much money was sent. And finally, at the end of this purchase function, we want to um, transfer the NFT because the ERC-1155 smart contract uh, that we are inheriting from has the built-in function called safe transfer from, and then we can just provide information that from the seller to the sender so the guy who is purchasing we want to move the token id and of course um, we are moving this amount uh, sending no data so so we have this purchase um, of course um, you can also as a homework add here another requirement that you are checking that this amount of nfts is actually available so you need to do the require balance off i don't want to waste uh, time on that but you would have the homework just to uh, change the implementation of that smart contract because if you want to learn something, you, you, you cannot just watch these videos. It's not enough, trust me. You you can only learn this by, by, by doing, by having silly mistakes that you have to solve it um, on, on your own. So trust me, you have to uh, actually um, try this code, not only watching, it's it, it's not enough. So, so we have the function called purchase. And um, now um, I think it's perfect time uh, to actually also provide the function that will allow us to win withdraw the funds because obviously if you are the seller and somebody sends the money uh, and the NFT is moved to to, 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 the, to some buyer, uh, then the seller of course wants to withdraw the the, the, the ether. And of course, uh, as you can just right now pause the video and try to uh, implement that function yourself or you can just uh, see how, how this works. So first of all, we're gonna check that, okay, if I want to withdraw the money, I need to specify how much money I want to withdraw, and then I can specify where I want to send the money. Of course, you can might ask that, okay, withdraw should always transfer money to the sender, but I think making the function withdraw that you can specify the destination address, it's a bit more flexible. It can also help you um, save some gas transaction because then you would always get money to your account and then you have to maybe transfer it somewhere else and now if you have the withdraw function in which you can just specify the destination address you can save some money on the gas transactions so uh, we have the first check whether the amount that somebody wants uh, to withdraw is uh, less or equal the actually balance of uh, of the guy that wants to withdraw so we have the message sender and then uh, of course if somebody wants to withdraw more then we have the insufficient funds and once we um, check that everything is fine then we have the desk address which is address payable uh, and inside this variable um, we hold the information about the address to which we want to send the money and whenever we have the address which is the payable we have the function called transfer so the smart contract will transfer the ether and here you just provide the transfer uh, the ether in way uh, so for instance it would be 1000 and this 1000 will go to this destination address and then of course once everything is successful we also need uh, to store information uh, that we have less balance for this guy right because he already withdrew the money uh, and we also need to track this um, so um, yeah we don't gonna need this so now I think it's a perfect time to actually uh, deploy the NFT trader smart contract again uh, I will keep uh, maybe the um, game items so so I will keep that smart contract and here uh, I, I will use JavaScript vir virtual machine so I have here some wallets so don't be surprised uh, that I'm not using MetaMask because I'm just testing and showing you right 
right now how to use the remix and how to write the code of course on pro if you are on production you can use hard hat you can use truffle or you can use any other javascript tool to write the smart contracts but i'm just to keeping uh, things simple uh, i will just show you how this works in the browser uh, so uh, we have the javascript vm uh, and right now um, that was the guy who minted uh, this smart contract uh, so um, I will deploy right now the NFT trader. And uh, again, we have to add the listing. So I will add the listing about the Charizard. Uh, Charizard is here on the ERC1155 smart contract. And here I can specify the price uh, for this guy. And of course I want to sell the Charizard. So it's gonna be um, the, the token listing. And again, we have contract must be approved. So because obviously it's a new contract so we're gonna approve it again um, that's the different address uh, we're gonna send the transaction and then let's add the, tra the listing again so we have the listing and right now i will try to purchase uh, the token zero for this amount of money and of course it doesn't make sense to buy the token from me right I'm the seller and I cannot be buyers, right? So so I will just uh, change uh, the address right now. So right now I'm no longer the seller. I'm just using the different address. So I'm new guy, right? I'm the buyer. So I have the account here and let's try to purchase, to purchase uh, this specific token. So of course uh, I have to specify the contract address because uh, this is the specific special Pokemon uh, NFT, right? Uh, then I want to buy uh, the token ID um, zero, and then I want to buy one amount of it. And then uh, inside here, uh, if I would just um, if I would just call it like that, uh, then of course it. It, it doesn't work. It's reverted because the insufficient funds sent, right? Uh, because I didn't send enough money to this uh, to this function. Of course, if I would uh, specify here the value of way, right? So I want to spend this amount of way, and you see that I have uh, 999.999. Uh, so if I will click the purchase right now uh, with the token zero amount one, now you see that actually I purchased the token. And uh, of course we need to update that. Uh, here, here we can see that, that some amount of money was changed. And then let's see the balance. So let's see the balance of actually this guy that, that, that minted the token. So uh, I will send it here. And you can see that we have the balance that we can actually withdraw and i will withdraw this money uh, not to my um to my account but i will withdraw it to completely different account so so i will uh just type here um so, so i will just type here this money that i want to withdraw it and i will withdraw it to um, for instance um this this address of course i need to go uh, back and um and I can specify it here. And if I click, um, and and let's try to call maybe the withdraw from uh, from different accounts. So, so so from the buyer. Let's try to be a hacker, right? So 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 I will try to withdraw the money that actually I don't own. And here you have the insufficient funds because obviously I don't have this money in the smart contract and I cannot uh, take it. But if I'm the guy who was the seller, then I can uh, try to withdraw. And then I just click this. And of course, if I will do it again. Uh, then I have the insufficient funds because I'm not able to withdraw more any more money. And now you can see that this address has more ether than it had before. Uh, before it has it had 100 ether. Now right now it holds uh, 100 ether something because obviously the way it's damn small. So if you want to transfer one ether or more, of course you have to put more zeros. You can read on that uh, in, the, in the in the internet. So. Of course, we did uh, the purchase, we did the withdraw, but right now let's be sure that actually these changes are reflected on this uh, NFT smart contract. So first of all, we're gonna take the address of the original uh, minter of this token and originally he hold it 100 tokens. So uh, let's see how much this guy has now. And we see that he has uh, 99 copies. And if we take the address of the buyer, and submit it here, 
now you see that the guy has one copy so you know uh, that how how you can create the contract that can call the functions from different smart contract and this way you can learn that it's super great to actually uh, connect smart contracts with each other because then you can build some nice uh, stuff on top of other smart contracts i hope you learned something if you like the video uh, smash the like button you can also use the comment section down below to ask me some questions or just give me uh, some ideas to actually uh, work on other videos from web3 so thanks you for your attention and see you on this channel